We were supposed to get married and stay together. The number one cause of marital stress. This credit wasn't good and mine was stellar. Was tearing this couple apart. All of a sudden things would start tumbling down. How they solved their money woes. My record is the state, you know, as a result of your um, irresponsibility. And saved their marriage. She was really thinking about leaving. Welcome to the 700 Club. There was an election in Texas a few years ago, and in one particular Democrat district, the Republican won going away. When it was asked what was the issue, the issue was cable TV. The Republican had said, I will get you cable TV, and the people said, we vote for you. Well, what are they voting for now is, are they going to give me cheaper gas, or is the price going to go up? And as Mitt Romney said about our president, he said, he's the man who brought us the audacity of hope. He said, we're, we're going to have hope for change. And he said, now he's gone from that to it's not my fault. Well, Americans are fired up about soaring gas prices, and they may face, take their anger out on politicians, especially the president. Well, the issue is front and center after Senate Democrats again put the kibosh on the Keystone Pipeline. Heather Sells has the story. Under pressure from the White House, Senate Democrats voted last night against a Republican plan to speed approval of an oil pipeline from Canada to Texas. Senate Republicans and even Mitt Romney are already using the issue to their advantage. They're calling Democrats out for voting against jobs and blaming the president for high gas prices. And Republicans are targeting Mr. Obama for lobbying Democratic senators to vote against the Keystone. It's hard to even comprehend how out of touch, how completely out of touch he is on this issue. I mean, think about it. At, the moment when, at a moment when millions are out of work, uh, gas prices are literally skyrocketing, and the Middle East is in turmoil, We've got a president who's up making phone calls trying to block a pipeline here at home. The White House and environmental groups say the proposed pipeline is environmentally risky. They're concerned it would use huge amounts of energy to transport so-called dirty oil from Canada to Texas. The president believes that it is wrong to play politics with a pipeline project whose route has yet to be proposed, says spokesman Jay Carney. But Republicans say it would create tens of thousands of jobs. It's an issue they believe that is perfect for the campaign trail. The number of licenses provided on federal lands has been cut in half under this president. The permits granted to, to drilling operations have been cut to one third of what it used to be. He even said no to the, I guess the only no brainer I can think of for a while, which is the Keystone Pipeline bringing oil in from Canada. Romney is also blaming the president in part for rising gas prices. Gas cost $1.84 a gallon when Barack Obama took office. It now averages $3.79 a gallon. And he says, well, it's not my fault. By the way, we've gone from, uh, you know, yes, we can to it's not my fault. Heather Sells, CBN News. Thanks, Heather. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I can't understand what's happened to the president. It's almost like there's a cloud that's come over his mind. This pipeline is such a, what you'd call a no-brainer. The uh, TransCanada people who are laying it have agreed to route it around the Ogallala Aquifer, so that's no longer an issue. The question is, how fast can they do it? And it could be done very quickly. It will put a number of steel workers to work. As many as 20,000 people will be employed. The amount of uh, oil coming into the country may be uh, in excess of a million barrels a day coming down to the refineries on the Gulf. Uh, it doesn't cost the taxpayers a dime. Why wouldn't you do it? Why? So what is the thing that has blocked the president's vision? 
I, I'm sure there are a group of environmentalists who are, you know, his staunch supporters, and he's going to cater to them. But this is going to be a wedge issue that's going to cost him the presidency. And there is no doubt about it. He's getting more and more vulnerable. And the fact that the President of the United States would call senators and lobby them to vote against a bill that would permit this pipeline to go forward is incomprehensible. Lee Webb has the rest of our top stories from the CBN Newsroom. Lee? Pat, the unemployment rate held steady last month, coming in at 8.3 percent in February. Analysts expecting the unemployment rate to drop gradually as the economy continues to grow slowly, but they do not look for the kind of strong job growth that happened in the early 80s under President Ronald Reagan. Israel is asking the U.S. for a bomb capable of attacking Iran's underground nuclear sites. Reuters reports Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu requested the bunker buster bomb during his visit to Washington this week. Some analysts suggest the U.S. might agree to give Israel that weapon, but only if it promises not to attack Iran this year. The White House denies that report and says no such agreement was proposed or reached. Pat? There is no way that Israel can promise not to attack the Iranian facility. They have a window of opportunity. I think it will close in June. And after that, those sites are hardened. They, they get behind uh, mountain ranges that uh, jet aircraft are, uh, you know, prohibited from entering. I mean, they just tactically can't get, they get at them. And uh, <clears throat> Israel has got to move. <clears throat> they can't wait. Why the delay, one cannot understand. But it's like the president can't make a decision. He can't make a decision. He knows he's got to do this, and yet no. And, you know, Leon Panetta was saying the other day, it's just it's awesome. the United States has got to ask permission from the United Nations before he can move forward in a, in a military action. Never in history. We are a sovereign nation. We can do what we feel like doing, uh, and we should. Well, okay, <clears throat> so let's switch from that. There's a group over in Africa it's called the Lord's Resistance Army. It's led by a guy named Joseph Coney. He is a absolute homicidal maniac. And they have been rampaging through the center of Uganda and Africa uh, for decades. And now is the time to get people in there, to get, to get armed forces in there and kill him. He's, he's been killing and raping and pillaging. He's got to be put out of the way. Well, they, they have a new video that we're going to tell you about now that is shocking. Lee Webb. Pat, a new video campaign aimed at bringing down an African warlord is sweeping across the Internet. It's called Kony 2012. Kony is Joseph Kony. He is the leader of a Ugandan cult called the Lord's Resistance Army. But he's no Christian. He's wanted for international war crimes against, mostly against children. For 26 years, Kony has been kidnapping children into his rebel group, the LRA. Turning the girls into sex slaves. And the boys into child soldiers. The video has had more than 50 million hits. The group behind it is called Invisible Children. Filmmakers say the next step is for Americans to start putting pressure on Washington and governments around the world. Some critics, though, say the film oversimplifies the situation and doesn't tell the entire story. CBN's Gary Lane has been covering the LRA for years. And to view his coverage as well as the Coney 2012 video, we invite you to go to our website at CBNNews.com. No reports of any serious problems following Thursday's solar storm. The storm shook the Earth's magnetic field early today. Experts had warned it could disrupt power grids, satellites, and telecommunication systems around the world, but that didn't happen. The solar flares did reach what forecasters call a strong level, but the worst problem seems to have been a two-hour blackout of high-frequency radio communications mainly affecting amateur radio operators from Africa to Australia in the Indian Ocean. Japan still suffers from a devastating earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear meltdown that occurred one year ago. Some 19,000 people died there, and thousands are still missing. But hope is still alive. George Thomas has this report from one community 
where Japanese Christians have been working nonstop to help survivors. Honda Tadakazu says if it hadn't been for Christians, he would have abandoned the seaweed factory that's been in his family for three generations. If they had come a month after the tsunami, I wouldn't have made it, but they came two weeks later and started helping me clean up. His company sits less than 500 yards from the ocean. 30 minutes after the earthquake, multiple tsunamis swept through his factory, destroying everything. Thanks to the help from Christians like Koji Oshima, he's only months away from reopening his company. Since the earthquake, the Holy Spirit has been telling me to travel around the affected areas and help people get back on their feet. It's a story that's been played out across Japan's tsunami-affected areas. Churches and individual Christians moved quickly in those early days and are still working to help the displaced and hurting. On March 11th last year, moments before the earthquake, Yokoyama Daisuke and a handful of Christians gathered in Tokyo for a prayer meeting. A few young people met that afternoon to pray and cry out to God to bring a spirit of repentance and revival to our nation, and then the earthquake happened. Within minutes, they started ministering to grief-stricken and frightened people. Once again, at Kamaishi City in Iwate... To watch the drama unfold on television screens. We went to the subway and train stations where thousands of people were stranded. We served coffee and tea and tried to share hope with the people. In the 12 months since the disaster, Yokoyama left Tokyo and moved here, some 25 miles from the Fukushima nuclear plant, where he's using worship to share the gospel with non-believers. People are coming to the Lord. They see love and compassion displayed by Christians, and they're touched. Domai Shogo is one of them. A former gang member, he spent 22 years in prison for multiple infractions. Last November, he got an invitation to attend Yokoyama's church and he gave his life to Jesus Christ. Today, you'll find him making friends among the thousands displaced by the earthquake and tsunami. And while tremendous progress has been made the past 12 months, the reality is that tens of thousands are still homeless. And so the government has set up temporary shelters like this one. But so many people are looking for a place to call home again. I spend my time listening to their stories. These are very lonely people who have lost everything. So I'm here to show them the love of Christ and to tell them how he changed my life. A theme echoed this past weekend. Did you know that God has a plan for your life? As Japanese church leaders invited American evangelist Franklin Graham to hold a Celebration of Hope Festival in Sendai. It featured a number of Christian artists like Kirk Franklin and others. One year ago, we had tragedy in this community. Now we're having celebration and hope because we are reminded that God is sovereign and he's still on the throne. He wants to bring fulfillment to your life. Graham, son of famed evangelist Billy Graham, drew nearly 12,000 people over the three-day event. I think for the first time, many Japanese people are, are open uh, to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Something Pastor Ikarashi Yoshitaka says he can testify has happened in the weeks and months since the tragedy. He co-leads a congregation not too far from the nuclear power plants. This is going to be a sad and happy weekend. Sad because we will remember all those who died last year, but also happy because we are seeing God move like never before. George Thomas, CBN News, Iwaki, Japan. So sad to see that devastation, Pat, but so great to see Christians mobilizing there. Oh, there's no question about it, and uh, we are grateful for the opportunity. Now, listen, uh, OB has sent in about 100,000 pounds of supplies into Japan. We have uh, prepared and delivered 50 fishing vessels so that those people can get back to work. Uh, we have uh, uh, distributed uh, more than, uh, Oh, well, there's, there's so many blankets and vitamins and medicine and all the rest that we've been giving them because they're hurting. And if you want to help, we're still there. Disaster Relief Fund for Operation Blessing, CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. Uh, we believe in helping those who have need and are hurting, and we're grateful for that opportunity. Now, this is something that we're not going to do a feature on because it wasn't at this point a very big deal, but it was a 7.1 magnitude earthquake that took place off the island of Vanuatu uh, in the Pacific, <clears throat> which means that Pacific plate, that tectonic plate is moving, and uh, if it moves in one place, it may well be moving in others. So we might be expecting some other things to happen. 
But uh, these things are devastating to Japan. Vanuatu, apparently it didn't hurt anybody too much. Well, Terry? And, and fortunately, no tsunami from it. But, yes. But wherever it shows up next, you know, could be devastating. So we need to well, pray God's grace and mercy. On it's the ring here. of fire, and those things are all connected together. Our North American plate and the Pacific plate and all these things join hither and yon. And as they begin to separate and move, I mean, it, it causes considerable devastation. Mm -hmm. There's the ring of fire. That's what it looks like. And Vanuatu is out there in the middle. So uh, uh, we just pray for that. And, and uh, we want to be there to help them when the time comes. So yes. give generously to Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. Well, coming up later, your opportunity to ask Pat. If you've got a question for him, all you have to do is log on, log on to our chat room. That's CBN.com. Mm. But first, hundreds of spoken languages have never been written down. Until now, the ABCs of creating an alphabet and spreading the gospel. That's up next. Hi there, neighbor. Pat Boone here from my good friends at Swiss America, the company that makes retirement dreams come true with gold. A lot of folks are shifting a portion of their retirement funds into a new precious metals IRA with Swiss America. And since 2004, these IRAs are up in value over 150 percent. I've been a very satisfied client of Swiss America for many years now because they believe in honesty, fair prices, and superior service. It's time to put your financial future on a gold standard right now. I own gold because it's a hedge of protection for my family. Even my grandkids can see that our paper money is becoming less valuable every day. So call or visit Swiss America now. Ask for the Pat Boone free DVD and gold IRA kit. Get the best education you can on gold, the best asset to own during these uncertain times. Call or visit online now. Monday. I was pretty crushed. I was devastated. Caught in the act. I just totally lost it. A husband gets busted. She knew something was up. For having an online affair. That kind of conversation should not have taken place between somebody else and my husband. What fixed his cheating heart? What do you do at that point? I mean, I just spilled and told her and when she left. Monday on The 700 Club. Welcome back. What if the one thing you wanted most in all the world was something you could never have? And what if that something was to read the Bible in your own language? That's the case for more than 300 million people worldwide. But as Charlene Israel reports, that's now changing in countries like Cameroon, where people are reading the Bible in their own mother tongue for the first time ever. These are the sights and sounds of Cameroon. Located on Africa's west coast, it is home to 19 million people. Most speak the official languages of English or French, but some 280 language groups blanket the country. 40% of the people here are Christians, yet most do not have Bibles in their native tongue. The Bible says in Revelation that God will gather a people from every nation, every tribe, and every tongue. Well, part of that is being fulfilled here in this village in Cameroon, where the Word of God is being translated into Yembeta, which is the native language of the people here. Here in the remote village of Babeta, life is simple, especially when it comes to communicating. The native language of Yembeta is usually only spoken, but that's about to change. In this tiny room, translators work from dawn till dusk, translating the gospel into Yembeta, their mother tongue. Leonard Bolioki is the project's main translator. They are very glad when they understand the word of God in their own language. This work is close to the heart of Wycliffe USA President Bob Creason. For nearly 10 years, Bob and his wife Dallas served as missionaries in Cameroon. 
He says the work of Bible translation has changed dramatically in the last 20 years. I think the thing that's uh, hit me the hardest, Charlene, is to see the number of Cameroonians that are taking leadership in the Bible translation uh, process here in Cameroon. George Schultz helps train Cameroonians in Bible translation. I think it gives them a, a great sense of pride and ownership. Wycliffe teams up with the Cameroonian Association for Bible Translation and Literacy. Effie Timbon says Bible translation is just part of the story. Most of the languages we work in are languages that had never been written before, never had an alphabet, never had even one book in their language. So when we start to work in a language, we send a linguist in to study the language, comes out, come out with an alphabet, with a writing system, and start to do books in the language, a reading and writing book to help the people learn how to read and write their language. Here they're translating the Bible into Tunin, and they're working on the Book of Revelation or Apocalypse in Tunin. Technology has been another game changer. Here, translators use a portable satellite to collaborate with experts in other parts of the world. This helps ensure biblical accuracy. The translating has helped lead to transmitting. In addition to reading the scriptures, people are also listening to the word in their own language. Through the program, Faith Comes by Hearing. Ambassa Apollinaire is the project's coordinator. In Africa, people prefer listening than reading. And most of the time we record the whole New Testament from Matthew to Revelation. After the recording, we go on the field and we set up listening groups in churches, in quarters, in houses, and people meet to listen to the word and discuss. Local pastors say having the word of God in a language they can understand is a great blessing. When I went to biblical school, I studied the word of God in French, and I thought that I had mastered it. The fact now that I can speak, read, write, and even preach in my own language, that makes me proud. When I visited this church, they were doing their service in their own language. They sang in their language and preached the gospel in their language. I had no understanding what they were saying, but when I looked at the faces of the people, it was clear to me that God was in that place because there was joy on their faces. Translators say that makes their work worthwhile. To be a translation consultant is both a distinction and it's an affliction. And the joy of doing it and the joy of seeing people read the Word of God and understand it helps us to overcome whatever difficulties we encounter. And the work leads to more revelation. Uh, the when it was in the process of being translated, the person who did the translation listened to the CD. He said it was as if he was hearing the parable of Jesus for the first time. Meanwhile, Leonard and his team have completed about 60 percent of the New Testament translation into Yambeta. He joyfully awaits the day when he can read the scriptures in his native tongue and share it with others. Very happy, yes, I will be very happy that day, yes. This word that became flesh moves into the village. He's no longer a foreign god. He's no longer uh, someone who doesn't understand my deepest needs. And now, more than ever, that realization can help lead to a life-changing relationship. Charlene Israel, CBN News, Cameroon, West Africa. It's amazing that over the years, these people have never had a, a written yes. language ever. I mean, it's extraordinary. The no French alphabet. Been, huh? I mean, don't you find that process interesting? It's Did you extreme, create an alphabet for a so. language? Wow. You can do it. And at least it's amazing. So what's next? Well, up next, a news anchor with holes in his pockets gets left in the lurch. <clears throat> Second Street to Citibank. And sat down and I started to cry. And the manager said, what's wrong? I said, uh, my wife has left me and um, I don't know how to balance a checkbook. The price he paid to win his wife back after this. Believe it or not, this is a catheter. It's the new Speedy Cath Compact for women. Now available from Liberator Medical with full Medicare and private insurance reimbursement. Stay tuned for an exciting free offer. But first, meet Julie. You know when you leave the house and you say, okay, I have my phone, I have my keys, I have my wallet, I'm good to go. Now I always have to think of a catheter because I can't go without it. 
Speedy Cath came into my life and it is life-changing. They're tiny and thin and you can fit them in your back pocket. You can fit them anywhere you need them. This is a lipstick or lip gloss and this is the size of it. With this, you're only touching the outer plastic and you're never actually in contact with the catheter itself. You, don't, you just really have to give a sample. That's all it needs is one sample and everyone's gonna want them. Now, here's that free offer I promised. Call Liberator Medical. Get your free Speedy Cath Compact sample six pack. Shipping is free. 1-800-595-1446. 1-800-595-1446. If you're the mother of a child with behavior problems, I'd like to talk to you. My name is Janet Lehman, and I'm a behavioral therapist and a mom. I know what it's like when the child that you love becomes a defiant, out-of-control child who disrespects you. That's why my husband James and I created the Total Transformation, the program that tens of thousands of moms are now using to turn around their child's behavior. If you've heard about the Total Transformation and wondered if it will work for you, now you can try it for free. I'm willing to give away a thousand programs today for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. We'll let you keep it for free. I know the Total Transformation works because I used these techniques with my own son and with troubled kids for over 30 years. Let me prove to you that it works by giving you the program free. Call the number on your screen now to get the Total Transformation free. Love and money. What does money do? It's a tricky mixture. But if you don't get it right, it could cost you big time. Julian Phillips knows that. Julian couldn't balance a checkbook. Ooh, and left his marriage in the red. <clears throat> she was a jazz singer. He was a TV news anchor who saw her perform at a nightclub. She's just beautiful. And she just had this presence about her. Julian was this happy-go-lucky guy. I was a little more grounded, maybe. Our relationship was good. We had a good time with one another. We just spent a lot of time hanging out and enjoying life. Hey, honey, I'm home. Julian and Barbara married three years after they met. That's when Barbara found out what they didn't have in common. We had very different views on money, and that's something I guess we didn't talk about earlier on. His credit wasn't good, so and mine was stellar, so I put him on my credit card, and I, I saw that he wasn't good at handling that. My passion always was uh, being a reporter, producer, news person, and you know the money in that field followed it. I was reckless with my money. I didn't save money. I was uh, hoping at some point in my career, after making a lot of money and doing things, that I could uh, you know get that uh, that big mansion. Julian maxed out their credit card, trying to achieve a lifestyle they couldn't afford. In the process, he completely ruined Barbara's credit. Then I was angry, okay, I was. And I didn't feel he took it seriously enough. It's like, okay, you know, don't worry about it. You know, we're gonna work it out. But I'm like, no, but I am worried about it because this is now, my record is, 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 is stained, you know, as a result of your, you know, um, irresponsibility. Now I'm scared because I've got this woman, I've got this prize, I got this, I have to be somebody now that I've never been before. Julian realized there were deeper roots to the problems he had with money. She's gonna find out the real insecure Julian and then all of a sudden things will start tumbling down. And so I think that there were seeds of insecurity all along for me. Barbara chose to suffer in silence, but she'd had enough. I think that I, I should have taken more of more control and said more of what I felt. I held a lot in, and I think, you know, that's where the resentment came from. So I really didn't know to the extent of how these things were affecting her. She was really thinking about leaving. You know, you got to grow up and mature and handle things as a mature adult, and I didn't see that in him. The couple went for counseling, but it didn't help, and Barbara moved out. And it's what's supposed to happen to me, that we we're supposed to get married and stay together. I uh, literally didn't know what to do. I marched myself up 42nd Street to Citibank and 
sat down and uh, I started to cry. And the manager said, what's wrong? I said, uh, my wife has left me and um, I don't know how to balance a checkbook. Could you help me? It was a very humbling experience. Julian slowly learned to manage his finances with help from his banker. He tried to drown himself in his work, but always thought about Barbara. I didn't know where to turn, wanting this to work, but couldn't figure out like what might be wrong. You know, I started seeking answers. Julian's quest led him to church. He grew up going to church and hearing about God, but he says that God was relegated to second place as he sought career success and marriage. Julian was regularly mentored by his pastor and began to pray for his marriage to be saved. He and Barbara maintained a cordial friendship and he invited her to his new church. It touched me in a very personal way, but I knew that it was about giving your life to Christ and changing how you live and developing a personal relationship with, with him. From that point on, you know, my life has been different. I've got this Holy Spirit in me now to show me that there was something to all of this being saved, that there was just something more than just pastor, that there was something that I had to see, that I had to experience, that was becoming very real to me. The couple began going to church together and eventually renewed their wedding vows. I knew that none of this was by my own effort. I realized that. I realized this is all God. Everything seemed perfect until once again, financial trouble hit. Julian, now a network news anchor, was suddenly fired. The Phillips were behind on bills, their car repossessed, and there was a pending foreclosure on their home. But this time, rather than sinking into despair, the couple turned to God and each other. I was completely confident that somehow we we're gonna make this work. The fight though still becomes a fight of faith because we're waiting to see how God is gonna manifest. A few months later, he got a job offer as a communications director for a congressman. I have found that when you're faced with what seems to be the impossible, he can turn it around. I would say that God has restored my marriage. He has shown me a side of my husband that has helped us to grow together, has drawn us closer together. I mean, we are best friends and we support one another. And so he has allowed us to grow together and to learn from each other and use that knowledge to make our marriage better. Money, money. The love of money is the root of all evil. The Bible doesn't say money is the root of all evil. The love of money. Jesus talked probably more about money than anything else. Why? Because you and I, living in this world, find money as a store of, of, of value or a representation of our labor. We have labored. And that money is what we get in exchange for our labor. We do so much work and we get paid for it. And then we use that money to buy the things that we want or we can save it up. So the love of money, and the Bible says that what is highly prized in the sight of men is an abomination in the sight of God. All this splendor and all this glitz and everything, it's an abomination in God's sight. And yet people think they need to take money and buy more. What happens if you're a hedge fund manager and you got a big payday and suddenly they give you 20, 30, 40 million dollars and you just get it and here it is and that's after taxes, it's yours, bing. What do you do with it? Well, you've got to show everybody uh, how important you are. So how do you do that? There are only so many cars you can drive so you get a big mansion and you tear down some little house and you build this monstrous thing on the sea coast and uh, then you get a big mortgage and then you're in a rat race and you're trying to show off what you've got or you go to the auction and you buy a whole bunch of paintings and you pay an ungodly price for them and you're saying to people, look at me, I am successful and this is a token of my success. It's false God. The Bible says you cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is the god of money, 
you can't serve God and money. That doesn't mean God won't help you get money. God won't give you prosperity. God, if you follow certain principles, He will bless you. There's no question about it. But right now, some of you are seeking to serve the God of mammon. And Jesus said, what's highly prized among men is an abomination in the sight of God. God looks down upon you and He said, what's in your heart? And what he wants you to do is to have your heart open toward him. And he says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all this other stuff will be given to you. It will be given to you. You can have things coming you, you can't believe. God doesn't mind you being wealthy. God doesn't mind you being prosperous. God doesn't mind you having enough to meet your needs. That pleases the Lord. So what do you want to do right now? And I want to ask you, who or what is your God? You can't serve God and money. So why don't you determine right now that you're going to serve God, and you seek Him first, and all these other will be added to you. Bow your head and pray with me right now. Pray these words. God Almighty, forgive me for making a God of money. Forgive me for wasting money. Forgive me for the wrong priorities. And at this moment, Lord, I want you to know I put you first. You are in charge. I want to do what pleases you. I want to follow your will. And if it's your plan and pleasure that you would prosper and bless me financially, I receive that. But I will give you the glory, whatever happens. And I thank you for the future ahead of me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want to give you something. Uh, we have a little booklet here that's called Love and Marriage. It'll help you with your marriage and you get that money thing. I've got a book I wrote, by the way, talking about money. It's called Right on the Money. You can probably get that wherever, I guess, through Amazon. Uh, if you want to read more detail about how you can have budgets and so forth, it'll help you. But uh, right now, you've made a decision. And I want you to live for that decision. Call. Tell our counselors that you've just decided that. Ask them to pray for you. They'll be glad to do it. No problem. Call in right now. Terry, we've got more coming. We sure do. We're going to take you to a wiki church and show you how the concept behind the explosive growth of Wikipedia can fire up your church. So stay tuned. I thrive on adrenaline. I drink about a half a pot of coffee every day. In a 24-hour news cycle, there are hundreds of stories going on around the world. You don't know if you're going to be covering a bombing in Israel, a swine flu pandemic, an inauguration of a new president. No matter what the story, we tell it with a Christian perspective. It does get crazy, especially when we have a bureau in Washington, D.C. They're doing their part to cover the story. Then you have a reporter that's doing their part, and our job is just to pull it all together for that final product. The news doesn't stop, and neither do I. I'm Tyler. I'm a news producer. I work at CBN. Have you ever had an idea for an invention or new product? Bill Schaefer, one of the inventors of Whammo's new Splash Wash, did. He came up with the idea while watching his children play one hot summer afternoon. Bill invented a car wash for kids. Ride through it, run through it. And Ben helped submitted the splash wash to Whammo, the makers of childhood favorites like the Frisbee, Hula Hoop, and Slip and Slide. If you have an invention you would like to try to patent and submit to corporations and want free information that explains how InventHelp may be able to assist you, call now. InventHelp is America's largest invention company with sales offices in over 50 cities nationwide. Call InventHelp today for free information. Bill Schaefer made a financial gain on the splash wash. However, most inventions are not successful, and Bill's experience is not typical of what inventors can expect. For your free inventor's information, call 1-800-260-7793. That's 1-800-260-7793.
Welcome back to the 700 Club. The Brazilian government now is fighting Iran's death penalty for Christian pastor Youssef Nader Kani. Brazil still has economic and diplomatic relations with Iran, so its voice could have an impact. Nader Kani was imprisoned for his Christian faith and sentenced to die for leaving Islam, but he claims he never was a Muslim. He has rejected the Iranian regime's demand to recant his Christian faith before he can be set free. Operation Blessing is aiding tornado victims in Harrisburg, Illinois. That town was devastated by one of the deadly tornadoes that tore across the Midwest last week. OB has deployed more than 2,000 volunteers there. Most recently, OB partnered with Future Farmers of America. More than 375 students from 15 surrounding high schools came out to help local farmers clear debris from more than 300 acres of farmland. You can find out more about Operation Blessing by going to its website at ob.org. Pat and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club after this. Are you noticing more wrinkles, frown lines, or sagging skin? This is Eloise at age 69. Eloise didn't like how she looked in the mirror. Wrinkles on her face and sagging skin around her neck were making her look old. So she decided to look younger with a lifestyle lift. Here's Eloise today at age 72, looking younger, refreshed, and natural. How did she do it? Call Lifestyle Lift to find out. It's that easy. Get your free information kit and imagine how you can start looking younger today. Monday. I was pretty crushed. I was devastated. Caught in the act. I just totally lost it. A husband gets busted. She knew something was up. For having an online affair. That kind of conversation should not have taken place between somebody else and my husband. What fixed his cheating heart? What do you do at that point? I mean, I just spilled and told her and when she left. Monday on The 700 Club. Wiki. It's a Hawaiian word meaning fast or quick. So what's a wiki church? Well, you could look it up on Wikipedia. Instead, watch this. Since 2001, Wikipedia has grown into one of the Internet's largest reference websites with almost half a billion visitors monthly. A big part of its success is that people of all ages, cultures, and backgrounds can contribute. Steve Merle says it's that idea of everyone contributing, not just trained leaders, that will help churches expand. He has applied this wiki church concept to his own church in Manila, Philippines, called Victory. Pastor Merle's wiki church started with 165 members, and now, after almost three decades, that number has grown to 52,000 and over 60 locations. Well, please welcome to the 700 Club, Steve Merle. Steve, it's great to have you with us. Oh, good to be here. Great things God is doing in the Philippines, well, around the world, but especially in your neck of the woods. Talk a little bit, if you will, about what a wiki church is and what it does, what it looks like. Uh, well, a, a wiki church, I think, the, as the intro said, we, the idea of Wikipedia is anyone can write anything and post it on Wikipedia. Uh, originally, it started with a, with a concept called Newpedia. And Newpedia only allowed trained, credentialed scholars and experts to post anything. But after one year on Newpedia, there were only 24 articles posted. Unbelievable. In, in the meantime, they started this feeder system called Wikipedia that allowed anyone to write anything. And within one year, there were over 20,000 articles. And in the next 10 years, over 20 million. And Explosion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I think it's what happens in the church. Uh, unfortunately, the church, the New Testament church, was more like Newpedia, where, I mean, like Wikipedia, where mm -hmm. everyone was expected to be involved and everyone was expected to contribute. But the modern church somehow has become the Newpedia model, where it's only the expert. It's only the yeah. credentialed uh, professionals. And so... Pretty much everyone sits back and, and lets the professionals do it. And, and so I'm, I'm hoping the Wikipedia church idea, um, the, the wiki church idea, where everyone uses their gifts and everyone uses uh, the gifts God's given them to, to be a part of God's kingdom. What have you seen happen because you've applied that perspective to it all? Uh, you know, when we first went to the Philippines, um, I, I think we were probably some of the most untrained and clueless uh, 
church planters or missionaries who have ever God left. must have said, at last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if anybody knew as little as we did when we went to the Philippines, but, but we were, I think, examples of, of people who just said, okay, we're in the game and God, whatever you want to do. Um, in, in the very beginning, um, we looked at brand new believers because uh, we went to the Philippines just for one month. Uh, we thought we were staying one month. It turned into two months and six months and years. But, but initially when we were about to leave the first time, we looked at these brand new believers, these Filipinos, and said, yeah, this is your church and, and you, will, you will start doing the ministry when we leave. Mm -hmm. And they had only been believers for just a matter of weeks. Wow. And, um, and, and we said, but you know, the people coming this week to church, they've only been saved one day. They, they, they come to Christ today. So really compared to them, you're spiritual giants. And, and our mantra was, we looked at these new believers and said, if you can just stay one chapter ahead in the Bible, then you can help these other people follow Christ. And you really released them to do we, the ministry. We really did. We, we felt like our job was to equip and empower. Our job was not to do all the ministry ourselves, but to equip and empower others to do it. And, and it was pretty amazing seeing how God would use people who were the most unlikely mm -hmm. and sometimes the not a whole lot of training but God did amazing things through their lives. You know what really struck me in the book as I read it was how how we have gotten things in the traditional church so backwards. You know, we really we here we have the word we can see what Jesus tells us is our mandate, but talk a little bit about he said he would build the church. Yeah, and I, as a church planter, and as one who most of my life has been working in the church, mm -hmm. it, it, it's important to realize that Jesus did say, I will build my church. It's not my job. It's not your pastor's job. It's not, it's not people in any kind of ministry's job. He's building the church. He's building the ministry. But our job is to make disciples. In Matthew 28, he said, go and make disciples of all nations. And I, I think when we switch that and we think, okay, I have to build the ministry and I have to build the church, then who's making disciples? But yeah. that's what he wants us to do. He, he died for people, yeah. uh, not for logos and ministries and organizations, but people. And our job is to go and take the gospel to people. And if we'll do that, yeah. he'll build a pretty amazing church. He'll build an amazing ministry. And, and that's evident by what he's done in the Philippines with the work that you all are doing. One of the other things you say in the book, amongst many things that I was underlining and highlighting, is that if you're not on the move, you can't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, sometimes our programs keep us stagnant, where when you, when you are empowering people and everybody's moving forward, it's a wow moment. Yeah. You've seen incredible growth. Yeah, and I, I think it's really a matter of, do I trust in the Holy Spirit in people? And what God, the, the, the way he's been so gracious in my life, in spite of my attitudes and my lack of faith and my whatever issues and lack of training and things like that, can he do that in someone mm -hmm. else's life? And, and yeah. he can, and, and I think that's why we have to take the empowering position of really believing in the power of the Holy Spirit in people. You know, Steve, I think a lot of people have felt over the years, and it's even been taught sometimes, that evangelism is a gift that some people have. And, yeah. and then there are a lot of people who are just uncomfortable with, uh, you know, I don't know how to share Jesus with people. What do you say to them? Uh, you know, if anybody is not an evangelist, it's me. <laughs> uh, I've, uh, I've never been mistaken for one at any, at any point. Um, but I think I have to realize for me and for every one of us, the Great Commission applies to us. And yeah. we're supposed to go and make disciples of all nations. And, and I think when we think about Jesus standing on that mountain and looking at his disciples and saying, go make disciples, mm -hmm. none of them interpreted that to mean we should go find people who are already following Jesus and help them do it better. Yeah. They interpreted that to mean we should find people who don't yet know Jesus and help them find him and help them follow. So there's a, in the whole mandate to make disciples, there's an evangelism component. Whether we're evangelists or not, if we're followers of Christ, we're supposed to make disciples at some level. And it starts with just sharing what he's done for yeah. us. Yeah. yeah you know, it's so, we are so touching the tip of the iceberg. You really need to read this book. It's called Wiki Church Making Discipleship, Engaging, Empowering, and Viral. It's available wherever books are sold, and it's really wonderful. Thank you so much. It's great to have you with us yeah, today. Thank you, Terry. Good yeah. to be here. Thank you. Well, still ahead from our chat room, Catherine says, 
My sister is gay and she's marrying her partner. She's asked me to be a bridesmaid in her wedding. I don't even know if I should attend the wedding, much less be a part of it. What should I do? That's going to bring it online with Catherine's question and his answers after we come back. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now for a new pain-free meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Call now and Arriva Medical will send you one of these new meters for free. And if you have Medicare, your testing supplies may also be covered. Arriva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs. And they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. With these new meters, there's no coding. You don't have to prick your fingers. And some of these meters even talk. Your blood glucose reading is 122. Call 1-800-284-4105. We will send you a free Betty Crocker diabetes cookbook filled with delicious recipes. Call Ariva today. You'd be glad you did. Hey, welcome back to this edition of the 700 Club. Man, it's nice to have all of you with us. I want to introduce you to Daniel. Daniel is a toddler who loves to drive his toy car wherever he goes. But he also is a child whose life hung in the balance when he was first born. Watch this. When Daniel was a month old, we noticed his stomach was bloated. So we took him to the hospital. There, doctors diagnosed Daniel with Hirschsprung's, a life-threatening disorder where part of the large intestine fails to work properly. Waste builds up, causing the intestine to expand. Surgery is the only treatment, and without it, Daniel would die. Warney is Daniel's mother, a widow raising her four children alone. I thought, how could I get all that money for surgery? My monthly income is less than $100. So on a recent visit to the hospital, the doctor told Warney about CBN. I was not ready to lose my son. I was so thankful. Very quickly, CBN set up free surgeries for Daniel to repair his intestine. Those operations had to be done in three stages over a six-month period. After the last surgery, we went back to see the little boy and found him to be in perfect health. Thank you to everyone who gave money to help my son. My prayer is that you will keep doing these good things that help so many people. Well, you can do that. You can make a difference in somebody's life. And we encourage you to join with us in helping thousands and millions of people, actually. It's so easy. It's 65 cents a day. It's, it's no big deal. But for you to do it together with us. And we've got something called the Quest for God. And by the way, if you do what's called Pledge Express, uh, we'll send you Power for Life every month. You'll get this thing because we will be saving enough money uh, in postage and things to be able to send this to you. So you can call your bank or financial institution and say, I want to sign up for Pledge Express, and it's easy to do. Okay, questions. Okay, Pat, this is from Catherine who says, I've been asked to be a bridesmaid in my sister's wedding. There's only one problem. My sister is gay and she's marrying her partner. I don't know what to do. If I don't agree, our relationship will be ruined. I don't even know if I should attend the wedding, much less be a part of it. That is a very hard decision, but you can't add your, uh, if you go, what you're doing is saying, I bless this union and I agree that what you're doing is right. You know, the Bible, is so clear about homosexuality. And when you read in what Paul said, he said, wherefore God gave them up. And having given them up, they did evil things with their own bodies, men for men and women with women, and uh, defaming their bodies. Read Romans, read the book of Romans. This isn't something I came up with. Read it in Romans. So you say, should I go to my sister's wedding? Should I participate? 
The answer is to tell your sister, look, I love you, I love you, but I cannot participate in a ceremony which is contrary to God's Word, mm -hmm. period. Yeah. And if she doesn't like it, if that breaks the union between you, that's tough luck. You've got to stand for it. I think how you deliver it, as you said, oh, has yeah. everything yeah, to with do love, with how it's received. The yeah. sister has to understand that this isn't something that you can approve of. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. This is Janine who says, I've heard you pray for people in the past and mention specific ailments. Is it possible that those words of knowledge are meant for more than one person? Absolutely. Sometimes many people have the same condition and they say, hey, that was me. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, it's like the Bible. Was it meant for one person? Uh, you know, uh, Luke writes, uh, here, Theophilus, I, I want to tell you something. And then that has been used for millions of people for blessings. So. Yeah. The, the, the word of knowledge is for whoever, okay? You know, the other day we were talking about that new show, I think it's on ABC, called GBS, yeah. or G, what is it? Yeah, yeah GBC, right. yeah. GCB, GCB. Okay, this person is saying, this is Jason who says, I just out of curiosity, what do you think would happen if ABC released a show called Good Muslim? Uh, the head of ABC would probably be assassinated and the studio would be blown up by uh, yeah. radicals. Uh, Christians are very forgiving and they allow stuff to happen. Um, th this, I think, has gone over the edge of blasphemy and, uh, and ridicule. I know it's meant to be funny, yeah. Yeah. But, but there is something psychologically in that that diminishes the real. Well, you know, the, the thing about it in, in, the, in, the, in, in the Southern culture, you know, he's a good Christian. He's a good, she's a good Christian. And uh, they can be backbiting, they can be nasty, mm -hmm. they can be, uh, you know, greedy, and they, they're good Christians. Uh, and so that's what they were yeah. taking off on. I don't know if... Well, it would be one thing to have a character like that in an ongoing series, but, but to title something that is a little over the top, Well, I, I mean, it, it, it's not going to play long, I, I don't think. It, it's got a short, short self, uh, shelf life because people won't even acknowledge they're watching it. All right? Okay, this is Ann who asks, please help me understand a quote. Ronald Reagan once said to a group of religious broadcasters, I know how much you respect and strongly support, as I do, the separation of church and state. Why would he have said that? And why would he think that religious broadcasters would agree with separation of church and state? Well, he's got to play to the popular perception uh, that uh, there is a separation. The, the Constitution says nothing about separation of church or state. Uh, the Constitution is very clear. I remember talking to a Supreme Court judge who said to me, it's very clear, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, not separation of church and state. But uh, what was Reagan doing? He was playing to the popular perception. And if you go contrary to that perception, then they're going to beat you up because the people don't understand the Constitution and they don't understand history. Well, Monday on the 700 Club, we've got a cheating husband busted by his wife online. Today, we leave you with these words from 1 Corinthians. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Have the victory over the weekend, and we'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye. Monday. I was pretty crushed. I was devastated. Caught in the act. I just totally lost it. A husband gets busted. She knew something was up. For having an online affair. That kind of conversation should not have taken place between somebody else and my husband. What fixed his cheating heart? What do you do at that point? I mean... I just spilled and told her and when she left. Monday on the 700 Club. Where are we? I cannot lock in on our time or location. Amazing. Which tribe is he from? You want the savior of the world to be born in a stable? History's in the making, mister. Do you want it or not? Daniel, you have to listen to us. And who might you be? You're in great danger. <gasps> master, master, we are about to drown. Why are you fearful?
I say to you, arise. I have been healed. 